This is a reading from one of the books in the Bible called Luke, and we're going to start at chapter 5. It's one of those readings that's really good to enter into in your imagination. So I'm sure the words will appear on the screen, but you might like to just close your eyes and, and picture it as I read it. One day, as Jesus was standing by the lake of Gennesaret, with the people crowding round him and listening to the word of God, he saw at the water's edge two boats, left there by the fishermen who were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the people from the boat. When he'd finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into deep water and let down the nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we've worked hard all night and haven't caught anything. But because you say so, I will let down the nets. When they'd done so, they caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. So they signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so full that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw this, he fell at Jesus' knees and said, Go away from me, Lord. I am a sinful man. For he and all his companions were astonished at the catch of fish they'd taken. And so were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, Simon's partners. Then Jesus said to Simon, Don't be afraid. From now on, you will catch men. So they pulled their boats up on the shore left everything and followed him. Brilliant. Let's um, pray, shall we? God, we thank you so much for your words. We thank you that in your word we find uh, more of who you are. We thank you that you are the God of vision. And as we reflect around that this morning, we pray that you would encourage us and excite us and lead us on in Jesus' name. Amen. So to uh, the friends and family of Albie, it's kind of in a way an unusual but also kind of a good Sunday to be here because today is our Vision Sunday, which means that rather than a normal sermon, uh, we're thinking around our vision as a parish going forward, our vision as a church, uh, and thinking particularly today about um, three priorities we want to have uh, in the coming year. But then we will also look a little bit at this passage uh, towards the end because we also, as a church, we tend to have a verse for the year from the Bible that encourage us, that helps us, that keeps us focused, and our verse for this year is, is hidden away in that story, which we'll uh, dig out a little bit later. Um, and so, yeah, at the start of each year, uh, uh, we tend to have a Sunday where we think about three things we particularly want to focus on. Uh, we call it our Vision Sunday. Uh, last year, as a parish, we launched our, our wider vision as to where we're heading and the hopes that we have and desires we have for each of the five villages that we serve. And as part of that, we talked about uh, the renaming of our parish as well, which I'm not going to go into huge detail about today. Uh, but from today, we are officially the Westworld Parish. Uh, and uh, this is uh, something that holds us all together uh, in all that we are doing and all that we're working on. We believe it reflects uh, all five of our villages uh, in a way that is uh, just kind of holds it all together really in unity. Uh, but I will go into that in more detail in the coming weeks uh, rather than focusing on that today because what I want to focus on today is our three priorities for just this year, for this year, these next few months ahead. And when I talk about having three priorities, it doesn't mean that other things aren't happening as well. Other things very much are happening and very important things are happening uh, that we will also be focusing on. But by having just three things that, focus, that we focus our attention on uh, and our prayers on and, and our work on, 
one just helps us to just realize kind of things that are just for the next few months that we think could be uh, really significant, things that we believe God has led us to. And the first one uh, won't come as a surprise to you. And when I share the first one, some of you will groan, some of you will laugh, some of you will kind of think, what on earth? Uh, and others of you might think, really? Uh, and then others of you, uh, won't, most of you will probably be thinking, oh, again. And it is, of course, to build a toilet at St. Mark's Church. <laughs> Now, we have been trying to do this for so many years, uh, and it's always come across uh, lots of complications. This time last year, I stood here and said that this was our commitment for 2023, and then a week later, we had the cost back for the building project, and it was three times more expensive than projected. Uh, and so it just wasn't viable, it wasn't possible, uh, and we made the very difficult decision in spring of last year uh, to go back to the drawing boards. Uh, Richard Elliott has been a huge blessing and a huge support and help in that uh, and we did that and we now have uh, some designs that we're excited about we're moving forward with and I want to say that by the end of this year we will have at least started to build that toilet uh, and if I stand here and say this again next year, I will be saying it through tears rather than smiles. Um, but we do believe in this project. And I know it seems like a really uh, kind of odd thing to make this a priority. But there's a number of reasons why I feel that building that toilet at St. Mark's is so crucial. The first is to do with hospitality, to do with what we're able to do in the building for the wider community, for the church family, for weddings and funerals and other things that that church is used for uh, during the week week with the schools particularly there could be huge opportunities by having the facilities for a toilet yes but also um, refreshments as well so I think it says something about hospitality that it really, really matters. The second is also to do with legacy. It's about the future of the building of St. Mark's as well, as well as it benefiting those who use it now. It's about creating something that can be used for generations, that lasts for generations, and that serves the generations to come. And so it's a really important thing. And then also about community. Uh, at St. Mark's, it's really, really hard to have tea and coffee. We have one outside tap that, I, as I discovered on Tuesday, if it's really cold, doesn't even work. You can't even turn it on. Uh, and so uh, having facilities inside to be able to do tea and coffee as well will make a huge difference to the kind of community we can build around that on a Sunday morning and on our Tuesday mornings uh, with the school. So it is once again a priority, and I am determined it will happen uh, this year. Obviously, there's a lot of factors, but we're praying that it could be done. The second thing is that as we think about um, our life as a parish, as the Westworld Parish, as we look at the opportunities we have uh, in Warninglid and at Peace Pottage with the new church that we planted at All Saints in October that is a growing and thriving community, as we look at the established church here at St. Mary's and at St. Mark's, one of the most important things we're going to have to focus on over the next few years, or next few months particularly, is how we come together and how we stay together. How we really remain united as one parish serving our five villages. And so focusing on united events is going to become a hugely important thing for us over the next few months. Our united gatherings that we unite around a number of different things. The first of which is prayer. All the things we want to see God do here, all the things we're hoping for and dreaming for and believing for, none of those things will happen without prayer. Unless the Lord builds this house, we'll be building it in vain. And so prayer is going to become hugely important. And there's something very powerful when we gather together to pray, when we unite to pray as churches. Uh, and so uniting around prayer is going to be a, a really important thing for us going forward. And our united prayer gatherings that will take many different shapes and, and times and all those kind of things to help us to pray together. The other thing is where, you, where we unite around worship. When we worship together, when we have Sundays where we all come together as one parish, the first one of those isn't very far away, and I'll tell you more about that in the notices at the end. But finding times to worship together as one whole parish uh, will become a really important and exciting thing for us to be able to do uh, in the months ahead. And then thirdly, meeting around social events as well, where we gather together for events just for fun, but also to raise funds uh, or whatever it is we may be doing that coming together 
as a whole parish is really important. Parish weekends, quiz nights, the things that we do that are on offer for the whole parish where we can just be with one another, share in fellowship and friendship together uh, and grow together in Christ as well. And so that kind of coming together, none of those things, prayer, worship and uh, social events together, none of those things are going to happen by accident. They're only going to happen if we're intentional about making them happen, if we're planning them, preparing for them, praying about them, seeking God as to when and where they should be, and all of those things. And so we want to be intentional, which is why it's been put as a commitment. The third thing uh, is the development of the Westworld Schools team. Now, you know that I personally am passionate about schools. You know how much I care about our schools. You know how privileged we are as a parish to have five schools in our parish. And how even more privileged we are that four of those schools have a Christian head teacher currently. And that's a really rare thing and a really amazing thing. And we really want to increase our partnership with those schools We are involved in all five in a number of different ways uh, that varies from school to school. Uh, But a lot of that involvement at the moment requires either me or Phil going in. But we really want to develop the schools team in a really significant way. Some of you may remember that years ago, Phil shared a bit of a heart and a vision that he had to serve rural schools in our area with with a schools team. Uh, And we really believe that now is the time. Now is the time to really develop and mobilize a team of people who can bless our schools in our community, who can build on the links that we have through the head teachers we have currently and the relationships we have currently, but develop the school's work in a massive way. And there's a number of ways we want to do that. The first is, again, prayer. We want to gather people together who have a heart to pray for schools and have a heart to pray for the next generation and those who work in our schools and those who serve in our schools. We want to gather them together to pray. They will be part of the schools team. We also want to see how we can serve our schools better. So at the moment, uh, as I said, I go in and do various assemblies or I serve Handcross Park as a chaplain. uh, And then obviously St. Mark's, we have lots of links with that being a church school. But we want to see where we can help our schools better, where there are perhaps needs that they need our help with. There's areas of Ofsted that we can help in. We want to help in those things. And so uh, next, or on the 1st of February, we're getting the four Christian head teachers together in one room to pray together, encourage one another, but also for us to ask them, what are your current needs as a school? Where do you need us to come and help? Where can we support you? Where can we encourage you? Where can we come alongside you? Uh, as a school, uh, and then as church and school working together. But the idea being that that isn't just St. Mary's Church going in or just the vicar going in, but it's the brand, in a way, of the Westworld Schools team uh, and who become a recognized name in the schools and who can serve those schools in the years and generations to come. We believe it's really, really crucial. As you have heard me say in recent weeks, I genuinely, genuinely believe that the next great move of God in this nation is coming coming through the children. It's really significant, and being in our schools is a really key part of that. And so we want to support the schools in any way we can. And then also supporting them through witness by helping followers of Jesus who are in schools, whether that's teachers, uh, whether that's people who go in to hear children read, whether that's support staff, parent, teacher members, governors. We want to be able to help those people to be salt and light in the school as best we can by encouraging them, supporting them in their work. Particularly, we want to be gathering around teachers. We know how hard their job is. We know how hard they work. And we really want to value them as much as we can by gathering around around them and supporting them in their work and ministry in schools as well. And so the forming of the Westworld Schools team uh, is going to be a priority this year. So hopefully those three things kind of make clear sense. Uh, Let's just look at our passage for a minute. I think uh, what Liz said was was perfect. It's one of those passages that when you read it, you can kind of just imagine it happening around you, can't you? And just picture the scene of the uh, the disciple, soon to be disciples, uh, fishing. Uh, they've been fishing all night. They are exhausted. They're tired, uh, and they've caught nothing all night. And then here comes Jesus, this this rabbi who people are beginning to hear about, beginning to understand, beginning to understand that there's something special about him. And then he just makes this request to the disciples who have been fishing all night, are absolutely exhausted, and he says, just lay down your nets again. 
Now, these are seasoned fishermen. They know how fishing works. The best catches happen at night. They do not happen first thing in the morning. They've been trying all night and caught nothing. But here is Jesus saying to them, let down your nets again. And something in them, something in what they recognize of Jesus, causes them to say, okay, fine, we'll do that. We'll let down our nets again. And so they do, and then there's this huge miraculous catch of fish where the nets begin to fill really, really quickly. And I'll come to what from that is going to be our verse in a minute. But I want to just draw out something first that helps us think about that in the context of our vision. Whilst we have these three priorities for the next year, there are also other significant things that are happening. We are deepening and strengthening our relationship with Warning Lid in a really significant way. Uh, as you know, we've got a reconciliation service between St. Mary's Church and Warning Lid happening on uh, Ash Wednesday, which is the 14th of February, which is also Valentine's Day. But we're doing it early enough that you can go for a meal afterwards. It's fine. Um, but that is uh, going to be a really significant thing for us as a parish and for us as a church and for Warning Lid as well. We also have really impressive links and incredible links being built with Peace Pottage, through the cafe, through the hospice, through the school. Uh, we're seeing incredible relationships forming in Peace Pottage, and we're really excited by what God is building and doing there. We also have the established congregation here at St. Mary's, and we're seeing uh, wonderful fruit and growth from in that and at St. Mark's as well. Uh, um, Helen, our church warden at St. Mark's, uh, told me a statistic the other day that although the numbers at St. Mark's have remained pretty much the the same, all but three of the people in the church currently are new people since COVID. That's pretty incredible, isn't it? There is growth happening at St. Mark's. There is growth happening here. We've obviously got the new congregation at All Saints, which is a, a new thing established and being led by Phil and Barbara beautifully. All of these things are amazing opportunities and really great to see God doing these things. And what we want to see over the next few months and next few weeks and months and years is that as those things are established as God is working in those things that he will also equip us and send us to be part of what he's doing and what I love about this passage and this is why this is our verse for the year is when the boats begin to fill to the point at which their boats uh, the nets are breaking and, and, and it feels like it, things are happening really quickly and really suddenly uh, for the disciples. And there's a number of things they could do. They could panic. They could, they could give up and let go of the nets because they're too heavy. They, they could wonder how they're going to do it strategically. But no, what they actually do is this. They signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. I think that's a beautiful picture of what I think is going to happen over the next few months. That where we see the work of God, we will signal to each other and say, come and be a part of this. Come and help with this. There'll be times where we at St. Mary's will be calling on other people to come and bless and help what God is doing here. There'll be times that Phil at All Saints will say, come and help and be part of what God's doing here. There'll be times that the schools team say, come and help and be part of what God is building here. But that whole sense of being in this together, we are one church in one parish that happened to meet in a number of different buildings. And this whole kind of concept of being in this together, that where the work of God is, that's where we go. That's where we are sent. That's where we uh, become part of what God is building in any of the churches at any of the times, whatever God is calling and leading. And essentially what we want our prayer to be is different from how I think it's been in the church with a capital C in the past. The tendency sometimes can be to say, God, this is what we want to do. Here are our three priorities, for example. God, would you bless them? We don't want that to be our prayer. What we want our prayer to be is, God, where are you working? And how can we join in? How can we be part of what you're building in this parish in your kingdom, in this place, in Westworld? How can we be part? Where are you calling us to join in with what you're already doing? Where are we seeing God at work? We are seeing God at work in our schools, hence why we've made it a priority to build a schools team. 
We are seeing God at work in our unity, hence why we are working to make unity something we focus on. We are seeing God at work at St. Mark's, hence why we want to bless that church hugely with the facilities it needs to continue on into the generations, blessing more and more people in Staplefield and beyond. We are seeing God at work in these things, and so we're saying this is how we want to join in, but there will be other things as well. There will be other areas where God is at work, and we want to be able to say, can we signal to our brothers and sisters in Christ and say, come and be part of what God is doing. Come and join in. And that, the role of testimony is going to become really important over the next few weeks and months as we hear about what God is doing, as we're invited to be part of what God is doing and invited in. And in a way, I wasn't going to use the whole verse as our verse for the year. We're actually using verses 6 and 7. So it reads as this. When they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish, which is hope for growth and the kingdom of God and revival that we're praying for, that their nets began to break. So they signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats. And then it goes on to say, so full that they began to sink. Now, I don't know how you feel about that latter part, but actually, are you believing for that? Are you believing for such an outpouring of God in our community that we haven't got enough room in any of our churches for all those who are going to come to Jesus? Do you dream for that? Do you believe for that? Do you pray for that? Do you hope for that? Do you stand for that? And when it happens, I'm saying when, when it happens, are we prepared to call to each other and say, come and be part of this? And when someone calls you and says, come and be part of this, are you willing to go? Because what happens then is that Jesus so changes their lives, they drop everything to follow him, wherever he leads them, to become fishers of men. And as you've heard me say before, that is a, a cinema, uh, well, I can't remember what the word is, an idiom, that's it, that Jesus basically says that I'm going to make you teachers who will teach about Jesus. Do we believe that God is at work in our schools and do you want to be part of a schools team? Do you believe that God is at work in our unity? And do you want to fight for that unity with every core of your being? Do you believe that God is at work at St. Mark's? And do you want to see him build a toilet there? <laughs> Whatever it may be, wherever you feel God is calling you to be part of what it is, he's inviting us to partnership. We're not saying, God, here are our things. Please bless them. We're saying, Spirit, where are you at work? And how do we join in? And do we give him our yes and our men as we're all in this together for his glory, for the building of his kingdom in Westworld as in heaven. Amen.